What's up Savvy Expats? In today's video, we're talking about the do's of living in the Philippines. And in tomorrow's video, we'll be talking about the don'ts of living in the Philippines. As always, if you want to support the channel, that'll all be in the link in the description down below. All right, without wasting time, let's get into the list. So starting with the do's of living in the Philippines, at number one, that is do avoid coming off too strong. Filipinos are well known to be some of the kindest and most hospitable people. So social etiquette is highly observed here. Saying thank you, respecting elders, and being inclusive is an integral part of socializing for the Filipino people. With that being said, you'll find that Filipinos are a non-confrontational and rather timid bunch when you're first meeting them. Now, as opposed to places in the US like New York or places in Europe like Italy, people are more direct and confrontational. In that sort of culture, being direct is normal and is actually hardly taken as offensive. But here in the Philippines, on the other hand, being direct is considered offensive and actually rather rude. So even just saying a simple outright no is sometimes a bizarre and outlandish thing to hear. Well, that is at least when you're with people that aren't close to you. I'm sure when you have an established friendship with a Filipino, just like anyone else, saying no is normal. But more often than not, I have to admit the way people communicate is kind of wishy-washy. And I think even the locals can agree with me on this one. Instead of a simple yes or no, you'll hear, we'll see, maybe, we'll try to make it, but. And this can be annoying at times when you just want a straight answer, but that's just how the people are used to communicating here. But when it comes to making a decision in a group setting, you'll find that it takes longer because most will not step up and say what's on their mind. But keep in mind that this is in general and in most cases. Of course, you'll still find many Filipinos that are still decisive, direct, and less timid and shy. But generally, we've seen that Filipinos are the friendly type, sometimes shy, non-confrontational, and very indirect. And so it's a rare thing to hear someone raise their voice in public unless they're singing karaoke. But overall, just keep in mind that being direct when pointing out your opinions and emotions is a very taboo thing here. It's almost kind of like things are a little bit sugar-coated. On the one hand, it's a nice part about Filipino culture because it's out of the kindness of their heart, not wanting to offend anybody. And then on the other hand, sometimes you just want one to be clear with what they're thinking and feeling. And you just don't want them to beat around the bush. So there are some upsides and downsides to this depending on your personality type. Now, moving on to the second do when living in the Philippines, that is do download the Grab app. I cannot tell you how much of a lifesaver the Grab app is for my family. I don't think a day goes by when we don't use it and that'll likely be the case for many of you. We use the Grab app frequently for ordering food for delivery, booking a ride, and once again ordering food for delivery. Seriously guys, Grab, which is like the Uber of Southeast Asia, makes life so much easier. And this is not a sponsorship. I know it sounds like one. And not to mention, as many of you may know, taxi cabs is a sketchy form of transportation, especially for foreigners. Sometimes they'll take a longer route, rig the meter, or not even use the meter at all and ask for a full payment. But in the worst case, you hop into the wrong taxi and they don't have air conditioning. Oh no. No, I'm just kidding. That's actually a mildly excruciating experience for some, but actually the worst case scenario is that you hop into the wrong taxi and someone holds you at weapon point to rob you. This is actually something that happens to some people. So by taking grab, it's much safer and the likelihood of there being an AC is much higher. So if you don't wanna constantly worry about your safety when taking a taxi cab, just order the Grab app for a much safer mode of transportation. And if it's a rainy day and you don't feel like cooking, you can order food. Now for the third do when moving to the Philippines, that is do your research beforehand. It is imperative that you do your research before moving to the Philippines. Yep, big word, that's how you know it's serious. Because when most people hear low cost of living, beaches, tropical climate, and for many guys, women, they get extremely eager to move to the Philippines without actually knowing what the country is like. And so when they get here to the Philippines, it may not be as picture perfect as they expected and they end up becoming miserable. That's why before moving to the Philippines, do some research. That's what you have this channel for. And I might add, subscribe because this is one of the few channels that you'll actually need. But in all seriousness, before you retire in the Philippines, at least visit the Philippines for a couple of months so that you can get a feel for the place. The Philippines may or may not be for you, so the only way for you to find out is by coming here yourself. Moving on to the fourth do on our list, that is do keep an open mind. 
When coming here to the Philippines, you'll experience many culture shocks. So it's important for you to keep an open mind because the way of life, the people, and the way things function will be different from your home country. You may come across certain foods that look weird, so keep an open mind. You may find the way people communicate is different, so keep an open mind. Lastly, you may find the way people joke is different, so keep an open mind. Overall, you'll inevitably come across taboo things that are considered odd in your country, so be open to what you see. Now for the fifth do, that is do travel with the local. This is something that will help you beyond measure. Whether it be your spouse, a brother or sister-in-law, a relative or a friend, travel with a local. Chances are traveling with a local will save you from getting lost, scammed and taken advantage of. It'll be much easier to navigate with a local and not to mention, you'll have somebody to translate for you. Not only that, but a local can direct you to some must visit spots, good restaurants and places to avoid. So having a local by your side will give you assurance that you're getting the most out of your experience and you get to avoid places that are not worth your time. Now for the sixth do of living in the Philippines, that is do extend your patience. As we've talked about in the past, Filipinos are not your type of punctual people. Where you're probably from, an event scheduled at 3 p.m. means that you show up there at 3 p.m. Well, here in the Philippines, if you schedule an event at 3 p.m., expect everybody to arrive at at least 4 p.m. Being an hour late in the Philippines is just the norm. That's just Filipino timing for you. So be sure to adjust your clocks to Filipino standard time. Meaning, if you want people to arrive at 3 p.m., schedule the event by 2 p.m. and hope that people will arrive even by then. Another reason you'll have to extend your patience in the Philippines is because people tend to do things much slower. As I've mentioned, walking pace, transacting, and the overall way of life is much slower in the Philippines. In foreign countries in the US, on the other hand, people tend to be in a rush and more focused on their agenda. But this in particular, bad punctuality and things taking longer is something that you'll likely experience when moving here to the Philippines. Oh, and I'll also mention, long goodbyes is as bad as it gets in the Philippines. I cannot tell you how many times we're getting ready to leave a party and everybody's saying goodbye, especially the moms, and we end up staying three hours later. At this point, when it's time to say goodbye, I could just stay seated and be sure that we're not leaving for another couple hours because that's how long Filipino goodbyes are. It's just a fugazi. Now, as for the seventh and final do when in the Philippines, that is do keep your temper under control. As you're moving to a completely different country, you may get irritated along the way as you're adjusting to the culture. But this is where keeping an open mind comes in because I'll tell you from experience, there's gonna be situations that happen that you may not encounter from your daily life back in your own country. Situations that are considered rude and off-putting. For example, I noticed that staring is a normal thing in the Philippines, especially if you're a foreigner or you speak English. Now, don't lose your temper thinking they wanna duke it out with you or start a staring contest. This is actually a normal thing done in the culture and you shouldn't pay much mind to it. Another example, which is the complete opposite of staring, is that sometimes people won't talk to you at all. If you're asking for directions and you go up to a stranger, don't lose your temper if they scurry away from you and try to avoid you. It's likely that they're not speaking to you because they're shy to speak English or don't speak it at all. So don't lose your temper thinking that they're brushing you off as like a snob. Another thing, don't lose your temper if you approach a group of Filipinos and they just start randomly laughing. Chances are they're not laughing at you, but just laughing at the fact that you're a foreigner and you approach them. So you'll find them pushing each other to the front and laughing to answer your question. Or basically they just push their friend in the front to try and get their friend to answer you and not them. I know if this happened in your country, you'd probably be like, what's the problem here? That's disrespectful. But here in the Philippines, they'll push their friend into the front so that they can answer you in English. And whenever a Filipino hears another local speaking English, I guess that's just funny and amusing to them. First off, because if a local speaks English, they'll classify each other as a snob or someone trying to act richer. Secondly, they just may want to hear their friend struggle and get a nosebleed. A nosebleed is when a Filipino struggles to speak English. And third, sometimes foreigners are portrayed as snobby and arrogant on TV, so a lot of them will try to avoid talking to you. Another thing to not lose your temper over is begging. It's quite common, especially in Manila, for beggars to be roaming the streets at a stoplight, knocking on your window, asking for money. Or what I've experienced in the province, kids went up to my window, peeking in, asking for the coffee that I was drinking. 
Overall, it can be irritating for someone to be knocking and peeking in your car, but don't lose your temper over this. This is just another one of the culture shocks that you'll experience, and it's a wake-up call of what life is like outside your country. So there you have it, savvy expats. That is the seven do's of living in the Philippines. In our next video, we'll be covering the seven don'ts of living in the Philippines, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to give this video a like if it was of any value to you and subscribe to stay updated on content like this. And so thank you for watching Savvy Expats and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.